Trees are one of the most fundamental data structures in computer science, and also one of the most powerful. Unlike arrays or linked lists that move in one direction, trees branch out. They are non-linear, which means they let us organize data in a hierarchy, like a file system, a database index, or even the DOM in a web browser. In this video, we'll look at what makes a tree a tree, how binary trees are structured, and how to explore them using DFS and BFS. We'll understand what it means for a tree to be balanced and why that impacts performance. Then we'll dive into binary search trees and wrap up with how real-world systems use more advanced trees like B trees and B plus trees. So if you are just getting into trees or need a solid refresher, this is for you. Let's start by understanding what makes a tree a tree. A tree is a structure where data is organized hierarchically kind of like a family chart or an operating system's folder view. At a basic level, it's made up of nodes connected by edges. A node holds some data, an edge is just a link from one node to another. And there is always one root node at the top. Everything branches out from there. And unlike graphs, trees are acyclic and connected, meaning no loops and everything is reachable from the root. The most common type, a binary tree where each node can have at most two children. Think of them as a left child and a right child. Each of those children can have their own children and so on. Here, the node at the top is your root. Anything without children is a leaf. And everything in between, internal nodes. And here is the beautiful part. Every subtree in a binary tree is itself a binary tree that makes recursion a natural way to work with them. But don't worry, we'll ease into it. So, once you have built a tree, how do you explore it? And there are two broad categories. Depth for search or DFS and breadth for search or BFS. Depth for search is like saying, let me finish exploring this entire path before I look at others. It goes deep, down one child, then that child's child and so on. Until it hits a leaf, then backtracks. Within DFS, we have three classic flavors based on when we visit the node. Pre-order, you visit the node first, then left and then right. In order, it's left first, then node, then right. Post-order, left, right, then node at the end. Each of this is just a different way of sequencing the visit. Want to copy a tree? Use pre-order. Want to delete nodes safely? Post-order. And if you want values in sorted order, go for in order. Here is a simple in-order traversal in Python. And yes, most of this are done using recursion, where the function calls itself to handle left and right subtrees. We break the tree into smaller pieces, left and right subtrees, and trust the same logic to handle them. Breadth for search or level order traversal is a bit different. It explores level by level, starting at the root, then its children, then their children, and so on. Imagine a queue at a theme park you visit nodes in the order they arrive. And here is a simple BFS using a queue in Python. Now, each traversal has its own use case. DFS explores depth, BFS explores breadth, and both help process nodes in different ways. Now, while traversing a tree, two important measurements often come up, depth and height. These help us understand the position of a node in the tree and how much work it might take to reach it. Or, to search below it. They are also essential when we talk about whether a tree is balanced, which directly affects the performance. Depth refers to how far a node is from the root. It's the number of edges from the root to that node. The root has depth zero, its children have depth one and so on. Height is the number of edges from a node down to its deepest leaf. So leaf nodes have height zero. A node with children may have a height of one or more depending on how far down the tree goes below it. These two measures help us understand the shape of a tree, especially when we are thinking about performance. In particular, we care about whether the tree is balanced. A tree is considered balanced if the heights of its left and right subtrees are roughly equal, typically differing by no more than one at any node. Why does this matter? Because in a balanced tree, operations like search, insert, and delete take O of log n time. But if the tree becomes cute, like a chain going all left or all right, those operations degrade to O of n. 
So keeping a tree balanced isn't just about symmetry. It's about maintaining efficiency. Now let's talk about one of the most useful types of binary trees, the binary search tree or BST. A BST adds one simple rule to the binary tree structure. For any node, all values in its left subtree are less than the node's value and all values in the right subtree are greater. This ordering lets us perform search, insert and delete operations much faster because we can eliminate half the tree at every step, just like binary search. Let's look at an example. Suppose we want to insert the number 7 into a BST. We start at the root. So if 7 is less than the current node, you go left. If it's greater, you go right. And you repeat this until we find an empty spot and insert it there. And the same logic applies when searching for a value. Here is a simple Python function to insert into BSD. Again, this is recursive, but the logic is easy to follow. We keep going left or right based on comparisons until we find the right spot. Binary search trees gives us fast search and insert as long as the tree stays balanced, meaning the values are spread evenly on both sides. But this brings us to a bigger question. How are trees actually used in the real world? Not just in theory, but in systems we rely on every day. Trees are everywhere. Databases use B trees and variants for indexes. Compilers use syntax trees to pass code. Operating systems use trees for file directories. Even machine learning models like decision trees. Let's look at where trees show up in real systems. You have probably heard terms like binary tree, binary search tree, B tree, and B plus tree. And while they sound similar, they are used in very different places. A binary tree is a basic structure. Each node has up to two children, and it's useful for representing hierarchies like file systems or organization charts. A binary search tree adds ordering. It creates for in-memory data where you need fast lookup and sorted traversal, like implementing sets, maps, or building indexes. A B tree is designed for systems that read from disk. Instead of just two children, each node can have many which reduces the number of disk reads. They are self-balancing and optimized for large-scale storage. A B plus tree takes it a step further by storing all actual values at the leaf level and linking them together. That makes range queries extremely efficient, which is why B plus trees are used in most databases and file systems today. In short, you use BSTs when data fits in memory and order matters, and use B trees or B plus trees when working with large data sets on disk. These structures power real products, from MySQL indexes to NTFS systems to language runtimes. Trees might seem abstract at first, but they model real-world computer problems elegantly and efficiently. And here is one more reason to stick with trees. They are one of the best ways to understand and master recursion. Once you start solving problems on trees, recursion won't feel abstract anymore. It will just click. So if you are serious about system design, computative programming, or building fast backends, Knowing trees is essential. So go ahead, implement one, break it, rebuild it, and you will never look at file systems or database queries the same way again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.